Hi, I'm Dave Kate. And welcome to today's video where I'm going to talk about lenses for landscape photography. Now, typically in landscape photography, or you have a variety of different lenses. Um, some landscape photographers like to use primes, others like to use zoom lenses. And I happen to be one of the ones that like to use zoom lenses. And there's a reason for that. And partly, you know, we sometimes will make the joke um, between zooms and primes because primes generally tend to be sharper for one. So the joke is that if you want to zoom, just use your feet. And in a lot of situations, that's indeed true. If you want to zoom, just walk closer to your subject. But in landscape photography, you oftentimes are not um, able to walk closer to your subject. You may be on the edge of a cliff face, like a Toro week where I'm looking down at a 3,000 foot drop. I can't walk closer to my subject. Um, if I do, I kill myself. Or again, I may be on a similar cliff face, but there is a wall of rock behind me, so I can't back up. Or um, I'm on a hiking trail and I have limited ability to move back and forth because I got a scree field in front of me or I may have a scree field behind me. And so in those cases I find that having prime lenses um, isn't as easy as you would think. And so that's where zooms, at least for me, come in. And I have three zooms here that I just want to briefly discuss. And the first zoom and it's usually the first lens that a lot of landscape photographers have a ying for, and that's for a wide angle lens. Now this guy here, um, this is the Sigma Art 14 to 24 millimeter F2.8 lens. And this lens here is a great little lens. Um, it goes from 14 millimeter all the way up to 24. You can shoot this thing at F2.8, although as a landscape photographer, I'm never gonna shoot at F2.8. We're hardly ever going to shoot at f2.8. I'm usually going to shoot this thing around f8, f11, f16, somewhere in that range. Um, so the fact that it's an f2.8 is nice. Um, in fact, the f2.8 is probably really great if you want to do a little bit of astrophotography. Uh, I'm not really sure what the coma qualities of this lens are. Uh, for those of you who may not be aware or may not understand what coma is, it's the degree to which a pin sharp star actually has tails on it because of the distortion due to the lens. And so this guy, um, I haven't really taken it out to try any astrophotography with it, although I'm very anxious to. And it's going to be interesting to see what I can capture with this guy. Um, but typically with this kind of a wide angle, especially something that goes to 14 millimeter, what ends up happening is you end up with what's called a fixed hood. And this hood is not removable. It's an integral part of the lens. And so part of the problems with going this wide, and it's the same thing with Sony's uh, 12 to 24 millimeter lens. It also has a fixed hood and that you can't use screw-on filters. So instead, what you have is a rear filter system here. And uh, I'll probably do a video on how to use this particular lens, because I find that a lot of people will use a wide-angle lens to get that epic shot. And what ends up happening is because they don't really understand how a wide-angle operates or how you can use a wide-angle lens, they'll take that epic shot, and you can't figure out what the subject is, because uh, the subject that they may have been thinking is so small in the horizon and part of that's an artifact of using a wide angle lens and there's a time and a place to use a wide angle and then there's many times and many places where not to use a wide angle and so I'll probably do a separate video on just shooting with a wide angle and just showing examples of what a wide angle can do for you and what a wide angle won't do for you. The next lens that I have is the uh, Sigma Art Lens 24 to 70 millimeter. This is a what's normally referred to as a mid-range zoom lens. And this particular lens here comes with a lens hood that pops right on. And 
it's what's called a pedal hood because this accommodates for the different zoom ranges going all the way from 24 millimeter all the way up to 70 millimeter and this lens is a is an extended zoom so the zoom comes out it's not an internal zoom like it is on the wide angle on the wide angle here uh, when you do the zoom the zoom is internal to the lens whereas here the whole front lens element moves when you do your um, when you go from wide to more of a telephoto side of the house this takes screw-on filters in fact I've got a screw-on filter there just to protect the front element I generally have a habit of dropping my lenses and so I like to try to protect that as much as possible I've already ruined two other lenses because I've dropped them and cracked the front element that's what happens when you hike and you're traveling um, in the back country and you're rushing to get your camera out and you drop it out of your hands because you're all sweaty and um, you crack the front element so on this particular lens anyways I use that so so far the lenses that I've shown you um, are the first part of what we call the Holy Trinity and that is going from a wide usually of a 12 or 14 or even a 16 all the way up to 70 so this thing goes this particular lens goes from 14 to 24 and then this goes from 24 to 70 so this is the first part the first two pieces of what's referred to as the holy trinity of lenses the other piece the holy trinity would typically would be a 70 to 200 millimeter lens so that way you get a full focal range if this was a uh, 70 to 200 you get everything from 200 all the way down to 14 millimeter this however is a little bit different this is actually a hundred to 400 millimeter and i got this particular lens this is the uh, sigma contemporary lens this is the uh, f5 to 6.3 dg lens and the reason that i got this guy was because this is where lightroom is helpful i looked in lightroom and I found that I didn't take that many shots from 71 up to 99 millimeters focal length. There was only maybe 30 or 40 shots that I had taken in that focal range. When I actually used my old uh, 70 to 200 um, f4L lens on my camera system, on my old Canon system, I would actually shoot it at like 100, 120 millimeters and above. And anything that was shot around 70, I would use my medium um, range uh, zoom lens. And I know that the 200, I wanted something with more range than just 200. I often found myself bemoaning the fact that I only had 200 millimeters, that I couldn't go to 400. And I had rented the Canon 100 to 400 and simply fell in love with it just because of the range. I could actually zoom out to 400 and capture things that I wasn't able to capture um, with the 70 to 200. So this is not quite the Holy Trinity and that I've got a break here. Basically from 71 to 99 millimeters, I don't have anything in that focal range, but this guy does go all the way up to 400. And I'll probably do a separate video on how to shoot with a telephoto. Again, for landscape photography, um, most of my shooting is done with this medium zoom right here going from 24 which is a great landscape um, focal range all the way up to 70 which is a moderate um, telephoto this lens i shoot and i do probably 75 percent of all my photography is done with this guy and then another probably 15 percent to 20 percent of all my photography is done with the zoom lens um, and there's a way to use a zoom lens in landscapes and why you would use a zoom lens in landscapes. You would think you would gravitate towards a wide angle, but there's things about a wide angle that uh, doesn't apply to every situation. And there are some cases where you wanna isolate your subject and that's when you would use the telephoto. The telephoto is fantastic for isolating your subject as well as compressing your scene. Uh, you've seen the photographs of all the different layers of mountains in late afternoon with the haze and all the different layers. 
you get that with a telephoto. You're not gonna get that with these two lenses because the telephoto, there's miles between each of those mountain tops, but the telephoto tends to compress it and flatten it. So that way you get that beautiful, gorgeous layer effect. That's what you use the telephoto for, is for that kind of photography. You use the wide angle photography, the wide angle lens here, if you want a really great foreground. So this is great for capturing nice expansive foregrounds leading to your subject, but you gotta be very careful where you place your subject with this lens. Because if you place your subject in the top third of the lens, or rather, if you place your subject in the middle of that lens, your subject is gonna be very, very small. In fact, you won't even be able to identify your subject. You'll have this gorgeous foreground, you'll have this little thing, and then you'll have this gorgeous sky above. So you gotta be very careful where you place your subject on the sky. Your subject is either gonna be in the foreground, or it's in the bottom third, or it's gonna be in the top third. Um, things get more exaggerated, they get more extended out on this guy. And so that's why I'm gonna do a separate video on the, um, on the wide angle, because these, these are great lenses, but you gotta be very careful how you use them and what your intended uh, purpose is. And again, telephoto is a great lens, but you gotta be very careful how you use it. Uh, it's great for isolating. This is great for exaggerations. This lens, though, is the lens that I do most of my work with. And this is my workhorse lens. And uh, this is essentially my holy trinity. My 14 to 24, my 24 to 70, my 100 to 400. So, like I say, I'm going to do a video specifically about using a wide angle, another one specifically about using the telephoto. Um, so, that's my lenses, and this is what I use as a landscape photographer and some of the reasons why I use these lenses. If you have any comments or questions, just put them in down below and I'll try to get to them as I can, and uh, we'll talk with you later. Thanks. Goodbye. Stop recording.